Hi there. So in this video, we're going to talk about cell cycle control, specifically talking about the role of cyclin D and cyclin E, controlling the RB or retinoblastoma proteins, allowing the cell to progress from G1 phase into S phase. So let's introduce some players in this uh, process. So here I've displayed uh, some S phase genes. So these are the genes that are responsible for moving the cell through S phase. So genes that produce proteins that are involved in DNA replication, DNA synthesis, such as DNA polymerase, topoisomerases, ligases, nucleotide synthesis factors. Uh, these genes are regulated by transcription factors, as are all genes. Uh, these transcription factors that regulate many of the S phase genes, uh, they're referred to as, uh, they have names such as E2F and DP. And so uh, these genes, if cells are not in S phase, are repressed by a protein called RB or retinoblastoma. So when cells are in G1, the retinoblastoma protein uh, binds to the E2FDP uh, complex on the promoter of genes and represses gene transcription. So these S phase genes uh, are in this cartoon are off because the RB transcriptional repressor binds to the transcription factors, preventing them from activating the gene and activating gene transcription. And we'll see how the uh, gene, genes get turned on uh, later in this video. So that's one set of players here. We have transcriptional repressor, the RB protein, and transcription factors, E2F and DP1. Um, we're gonna introduce another gene that is controlled by these same transcription factors and transcription repressors, this is a gene called CCNE1, which makes a protein called cyclin E. So in a previous video, we introduced the cyclin D protein. Now we're gonna talk about the cyclin E protein. Uh, of course, we can't leave out the cyclin D protein because the cyclin D protein, in fact, regulates the cyclin E gene, and we're gonna see that shortly. But for now, we'll talk about the fact that in G1 phase, uh, this gene is kept off. The CCNE1 gene um, uh, is repressed by the RB um, transcriptional repressor at the promoter level. So um, we've got two proteins here. We've got cyclin E and cyclin D. They are both cyclin proteins. They're members of the cyclin family. There are other cyclins, cyclin B, cyclin A. We're just gonna focus on D and E here. And so the key thing to know about the cyclins is that when cells are in G1, their levels are kept very low. How? Well, we talked in the previous videos about cyclin D. Uh, their levels can be kept low very a number of different ways, uh, transcriptional regulation, uh, post-translational regulation at the level of protein degradation. So cells keep the level of cyclin D low until there's a signal to go into the cell cycle. Um, so cyclin D, the function of cyclin D, if you recall from the previous video, is to bind uh, its partner cyclin-dependent kinases, either CDK4 or CDK6. Here we're just going to draw them together, CDK4 slash 6. But in this uh, G1 phase, cyclin D is not present, so these kinases, CDK4 and 6, are not active. Cyclin E, we will soon see, um, when it is present, is able to bind a cyclin-dependent kinase called CDK2 and activate it. But in this uh, state, in G1, the levels of cyclin E are low. Why? Well, number one, the RB repressor is binding to its transcription factors, keeping transcription low. And there's another way that cyclin E levels are kept low in the cell. Uh, the kinase GSK3 beta, which we know is active in G1 phase, can phosphorylate cyclin E, allowing cyclin E to bind to a protein called CUL3, which is an E3 ubiquitin ligase. And if you recall from our previous video, ubiquitin ligases conjugate uh, ubiquitin uh, ligation or conjugation to a protein, allowing it to be sent to the proteasome and destroyed. So what we're looking at here is uh, cells in G1, uh, cyclin D and E levels are kept very low, a number of different ways, as you can see here, and that uh, leads to S phase genes being kept in the off position. So cyclin D and cyclin E, 
not around, really. So now let's talk about what happens when cells get a signal to grow. They get exposed to growth factors. That allows for the production and stability of cyclin D, as we saw in some previous videos. And cyclin D levels rise, and cyclin D is able to join, bind to its cyclin-dependent kinases, either 4 or 6. This complex, the cyclin-dependent kinase, 4 or 6, when it binds to cyclin D, uh, allows the CDK4 or 6 to phosphorylate its substrate. And in this cartoon, we're seeing that its substrate is the RB protein. So RB, we talked about it, it's a transcriptional repressor. Phosphorylation can alter the activity of proteins. In this instance, the RB protein, when it becomes phosphorylated, uh, becomes less active. And here I've drawn hypophosphorylated. It turns out RB has over a dozen sites of phosphorylation. And so it can be uh, phosphorylated at a low level or a high level. So here we're phosphorylating at a low level. And phosphorylation on the RB protein changes its 3D conformation so that it is a less effective uh, repressor. Remember, the function of RB is a repressor. So when it is phosphorylated, it represses less. What does that mean? Well, that means that it will um, allow E2F and DP1 to function. Their transcription factors, their, their role is to recruit RNA polymerase to the gene and allow transcription to occur in that gene, which would allow the protein to be produced. So now that cyclin D is present, RB begins to be phosphorylated, allowing for the transcription of cyclin E, which allows cyclin E protein to be produced. Now that cyclin E is being produced, it can join with its cyclin-dependent kinase, CDK2, and this complex can now phosphorylate its substrate. So what's the substrate for CDK2? It turns out it's the RB protein. So RB can be phosphorylated by CDK4 and 6 when it's combined with cyclin D, and also CDK2 when it's combined with cyclin E. This phosphorylation occurs on RB, which makes it, it now makes it to become hyperphosphorylated. It's becoming more phosphorylated, and the effect on the activity is it makes it less active. So again, recall, RB is a repressor, so it is less repressing, which allows for the production of more cyclin E, which allows for the more phosphorylation of the RB protein. So this is what we call a positive feedback loop in biology. And so this positive feedback loop allows the cell to commit to entering S phase. And we'll see that uh, in another slide shortly. So cyclin, so RB, so RB regulates the cyclin E promoter. Cyclin D comes along with CDK4 and 6, begins to phosphorylate RB, which allows for the production of cyclin E, which leads to more RB phosphorylation, which leads to more cyclin E production, and we get this positive feedback loop. Uh, bringing it back to those S phase genes we introduced at the beginning of the video. So now that uh, we have high levels of cyclin E with CDK2, uh, these are hyperphosphorylating in the RB protein um, that is present actually on many different promoters. And so when the RB protein is hyperphosphorylated, we talked about it being inactive. And now that it is inactive, RNA polymerase can be recruited to the gene by, its, by the transcription factors E2F and DP, allowing for the transcription and production of proteins that will push the cell into S phase, that commit the cell to replicating its DNA. So uh, what we've just seen is actually the cell passing through what is called the R point of the cell cycle, also known as the restriction point of the cell cycle. Here I've drawn a cell uh, a pretty uh, plain cell in G1. It has a nucleus, and I drew two growth factor receptors on its surface. Uh, and so when we talk about what the what's the R point, the R point is the point of no return. It's the point where the cell has committed to going into S phase. So if we draw a little graph here of uh, levels of proteins or activities, either high or low levels, when cells are in G1, cyclin D levels are very low. And again, cyclin D is regulated many ways, um, transcriptionally, translationally, post-translationally, uh, stability-wise. And so when cells are exposed to growth factor, uh, 
that sends a signal into the cytoplasm and into the nucleus, allowing for the production of cyclin D that was covered um, in a previous class. Now, uh, cyclin D levels have to reach a certain point for, in order to commit the cell into the uh, cell cycle. Uh, at this point here, cells are still in G1. Are we in S phase? No. Let's say growth factors went away, or they weren't around in a high enough concentration, or they weren't here for a long enough time. Cyclin D levels can go back down. Remember, cyclin D can be destroyed by ubiquitylation. And so uh, cells are not, in G, uh, not going into S phase yet because cyclin D has to build up to a certain level to allow for a change in RB activity. Now let's say the cells are exposed again to growth factor and cyclin D levels are starting to go up. If cells are exposed to either a high enough concentration of growth factor or exposed for a long enough time or other signals are coming into the cell allowing for a critical level of cyclin D to be produced, this can finally have an effect on RB activity. So remember, during S phase, RB is very active. It is repressing uh, E2F genes. When cyclin D levels reach a certain uh, level, RB activity starts to go down because cyclin D is joining with CDK4 or 6 to phosphorylate and starting to inactivate RB. This will allow the production of cyclin E protein. As you recall, RB can regulate the cyclin E gene. Well, now cyclin E is being produced and its levels increase, cyclin E joins with CDK2 to phosphorylate and further decrease the activity of RB. And so this point here in the cell cycle is what is known as the R point. When the cell has reached a high enough level of cyclin D first and then cyclin E to phosphorylate enough RB to allow this positive feedback loop to kick in and cyclin E is going to be produced at a very high level, and RB will be phosphorylated at a very high level, that is the point of no return. So any time before this, uh, you can withdraw growth factor, and the cell will stay in G1. Any time after the R point, if you take away growth factor, the cell has committed to going to S phase. It's going, second linear levels are high enough, and RB, levels, uh, RB activity is low enough, the cell has now committed to S phase. So, uh, I hope in this video you've, you can take away the, the um, uh, uh, concepts of how the cyclin E gene is regulated by RB, how cyclin E in fact goes back and regulates RB through a positive feedback loop, and how uh, that RB regulates um, S phase genes. And hopefully in a later video we'll talk about mutations in cyclin D, cyclin E, and RB that uh, are involved in cancer.